Hey everybody, it's Rick Bassman here for Talking Tough. It's uh, just after seven here on Maui. Uh, you'll see the background looks different today than usual. I've never done a podcast at, uh, at this hour, so I had to move all over the house trying to figure out the lighting. Um, I'm in the, I'm a little bit in the dark myself, as you can see, which as I always say, is an advantage to me. Uh, so if you know, half jokingly, I always say, uh, the dark is, is my friend, but in, in any case, uh, something else new for me today, I have a guest on and I'll introduce her in a, in a minute or two. Her name is Cherie Sh- Curie from the legendary and iconic, I should say the legendary Cherie Curie from the iconic runaways, uh, Here's what's different about this for me. As you all know, my guests that I have on are all longtime friends of mine. So there, there's a, a level of comfort and familiarity. This is different for me. Today, I get to be a fan. So I'm pretty darn excited about that. I've loved the Runaways since I first discovered them 20 some years ago. And uh, I got to talk to Cherie for a few minutes before we started the uh, the broadcast here. So it was nice to get to meet her and uh, see her and uh, get to know her for all of about five minutes. So anyway, it's about 7 a.m. It's early for me. I'm on about three hours sleep. Uh, life goes up and down, as we all know. We're always changing or trying to change. I made a decision about a month ago to quit uh, caffeine and sugar and Red Bull and Afrin and Kratom all at the same time whole bunch of things that in my mind just were not doing me any good. So my body's still balancing out. Um, I feel great mentally and emotionally. Physically, it's uh, dealing with a little bit insomnia, crash out hard at about 11 or 12, and then I'm wide awake at two or three. So I am going to do my best to get through this all bright eyed and bushy tailed. I'm really exciting to, (laughs) I'm excited to have a guest on today who is lived a very big life. Uh, She's experienced so many ups, so many downs. I know this again, not through a personal acquaintance, but through following her story and and really getting to to read up on her, watch her movie, um, listen to her audio book recently in preparation for this. Uh, Without any further delay, it is my great pleasure again to bring on the iconic Cherie Curie from the legendary Runaways. Thank you, Rick. And it's so funny because you say uh, it's like Madame Curie, but it's actually Cherie Curry, like, you know, the spice. But I I was listening. I was listening to you, um, your opening statements and you're you've gotten off of caffeine and all these. I I didn't even know what some of those things were that you are no longer taking. But I've been there, done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. You you have, haven't you? I, I dare say to um, to a degree beyond me. Uh, real quickly, this is probably kind of tough to dive into, but let's say it. Can can you? People know your story. The people that know the Runaways, the people that have watched the movie or or listened to your book, Neon Angel, or or read the book. Uh, you are you are the epitome of the rock star who lived the rock and roll lifestyle. Is that a fair statement? Um, for, for a period of time. Yes. From like 16 or 15 till, I don't know, 24. And then, uh, that was it. That was it. And then of course, I mean, I've been doing tours, uh, since the movie came out. Um, but, uh, as far as the whole rock and roll drug thing, yeah, that was just in the seventies for me and early eighties. And then I was done with that. All right. So you've been you've been living the clean life for all these years now. That's amazing. As clean as I can. And I mean, you know, there's there's been times like all of us. I mean, I've I I haven't been able to stay completely sober for that whole period of time. And I mean, you know, you have accidents, you have to take uh, painkillers, you have to do this or that or the other thing. But you always turn around and get back on track. And that's the most important message. Good. Is yeah, that, I mean, you, you know, this is a lifelong thing for, for, for someone like me who's just a hardcore, you know, alcoholic drug addict that doesn't practice. Um, but, you know, it's it's something that stays with you for the rest of your life. Unfortunately, I, w- I wish it was different. But but, you know, that's just the truth. 
you know, it's a struggle for all of us. So when I heard your opening statement, I, I felt for you because, you know, I'll, I'll never forget getting off sugar. And I mean, I, I mean, I'd stop smoking, no drinking, no drugs, no sugar. And there was, I think three months in, all of a sudden there was my, I was living with my aunt and there were these Klondike bars in, in the freezer and there was nothing that was going to stop me. I, even though I was saying, no, no, as I'm grabbing the Klondike bar and shoving it, there was nothing that was going to stop me from, <laughs> it was got crazy, you know, crazy after three months of being off of it, just like that. Well, you know, you may want to look into KBA, Klondike Bar Anonymous. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, I feel you. Um, it, it, it's a journey, isn't it? But, you know, I, I wouldn't say I've come out the other side yet because I'm obviously with the insomnia and all that. But I feel so happy mentally just knowing that all that stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, blessedly, I have zero cravings for anything, which is amazing. I mean, it's like this cup of organic tea, which I never would have wanted to look at a month ago. It's like the most amazing thing in the world right now. So there's always hope, right? That's right. That's right. Good for you. Let, let me ask you a very canned question. I, I want to try to ask you things you don't always answer in interviews, but I have to ask this one because I am a fan. You've heard it a million times. Any chance ever still of a reunion of all five of the whole band? Well, of course, we lost Sandy back in yep. 2006. So that's that was just still so painful and tragic for all of us. Uh, but, you know, it's it's Joan and Lita that just don't seem to be able to get along. I've had the opportunity to play with all the girls uh, individually, even me and Lita. Just a few years ago, I did quite a few shows with her and I've done shows with Joan and, uh, of course, with Sandy when she was alive and even Jackie. So uh, I've played with all the girls. Um, but Jack, uh, but uh, Lita and, and Joan, um, Lita just has an issue with Kenny Laguna and they just can't seem to have a meeting of the mind. So unfortunately, I've had to let that dream go. OK, had like you did with sugar, you know, <laughs> just, just finally just say, you know what, uh, you can't control people and 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 you just move on with your life. And that's the way I feel about it now. No, it's too bad. Enough. You know, it's good to be able to put things in the rear view. That's for sure. It doesn't do us any good to hang on to things, does it? It sounds like that's a lesson we we both learned at our at our tender ages here. Yeah. Uh, although I had to ask, I, I've been a promoter for forty some years now, and uh, heck, I would have put an offer in to whoever your would be agent would have been. So I had to ask. That's all. <laughs> Well, again, you know, I mean, things and people change and I mean, maybe Lita and Joan will, uh, you know, have up some meeting of the minds and realize that the fans are more important. I mean, you know, Joan seems to think that the runaways were just great as us being teenagers and and not wanting to revisit that. But yet she and I have had a whole lot of fun on stage uh, performing these songs Uh in the last 10 years and, and Lita and I. So, you know, just hopefully maybe with this pandemic and all this other stuff that's been going on that they'll realize that life is short and why not just have some fun? We, we can never say never. Well, good. That, that's, yeah. an that's an amazing place to, to be in, Shuri. In the meantime, you have an incredible music career. Um, I listened to your your recent album um or your new album i should say um are you uh boulevards of splendor are you planning on touring off of that if this world opens back up again absolutely i mean that that album deserves to have that kind of tour support and i have to because i just love the record i've loved it for 10 years you know i'm so glad it's finally out and that people are reacting to it the way they are because it's it's the album I always wanted to make when I left the Runaways. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, it's really good. Boulevards of Splendor. How how would people uh, take a listen or or purchase the album? Well, they can download it on Amazon or all those. I, I'm not very good with that kind of stuff, Rick. Um, I'm not tech savvy, and I don't I don't know the dot coms and all that. But 
Uh, they can also get the vinyl if they want it as well through Blackheart and even my store, uh, Iva's store, Cherie Curry. I don't even know what it is. Darn it. But people can find it uh, online. And um, unfortunately, there is not a CD. But we'll see. Maybe maybe Blackheart will decide to uh, put it on CD, which I hope they do. I want to ask our amazing producer, John Paz, who's hiding out behind the scenes here. But he's listening in. John, if you would, while we're doing this uh, interview conversation, find the link where people can go right to uh, Cherie's album. That would be great. That way we can uh, mention it before we're done here. So we'll we'll get that we'll get that link, Cherie. Thanks, so, Rick. Looking back, okay. So of course I watched the movie The Runaways. I watched it when it came out, and I watched it again in preparation for this. Would you, would you say that the depiction of you in that movie, played by Dakota Fanning, of course, was that on one to a hundred? How accurate was that? I I can't even imagine anybody doing a better job than than Dakota did. Um, she she's just brilliant. Uh, it, I mean, it's it was very accurate. It wasn't. I mean, as, as far as the movie in general, it could have it could have delved a lot deeper. If you actually have listened to my audiobook, you know that there was so much more to the Runaways than what could have been put in ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. But there. I do appreciate just the great acting and even Floria Sigismonti. I think her ability to capture the seventies is just fantastic. And, um, you know, with with what we were limited to, with not having Lita on board, uh, I think it just turned out great. So you were you were a true wild <laughs> child, no, no doubt about it. And I love it. There's your dogs. Uh, we, something, and I yeah, were, uh, something just knocked on the house. I don't know what, what it was, but probably the mailman. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, she, everybody out there, Sheree and I were talking uh, before we started this, and I heard her dogs bark. And you all know <laughs> I cannot get through a talking tough conversation without my dogs barking. So it's it's always it's always a beautiful thing to meet another dog lover on this show. So if you want to put them on, if you want to put them on, we're glad to talk to them as well. <laughs> always. That's cute. We're all, we're all about the doggies. So you were you were a true wild child back in those <laughs> days. So you're saying it was accurate. I expected that was the case. Looking back on that now, all these years later, what what would you tell your 16-year-old or 17-year-old or 18-year-old self if she was sitting in the room with you right now and you had a minute to talk with her? What would I tell her? Uh, gosh, I mean, that that's tough. I put you on the spot. I... I, I I know I knew that'd be putting you on the spot, but uh, I was hoping to ask some questions you don't usually get. And well, like you know, I, I what what I would have told her was to demand that we have a, a moderator, somebody that would allow us to speak to each other, somebody that could, uh, you know, help us understand what was going on in the band. And um, and of course, I mean, 16, 17 year old girls, 18. Uh, you know, they're just, we were so insecure and we were so, uh, there was so much jealousy and all that kind of stuff. And I just, and we had nobody that would sit us down and allow us to talk it out. That would have saved the band. We, I would have stayed if we would have just been able to take a break and have somebody, um, you know, that really cared about the band, but there just wasn't anyone. Kim Fowley certainly didn't at the time. Uh, so and also, I would have told her to believe in herself a little bit more. Yeah, it's tough at that age, isn't it? When you're suddenly just taken, almost not not on the streets. You 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 were living in a, you know, in a nice home with your sister and, and occasionally with with your parents. I remember that that's depicted accurately as well. Obviously, it is because I listened to your book. Um, you weren't off the streets, but metaphorically speaking, you're you're plucked off the streets and thrust into really almost overnight stardom nothing's overnight you and i both know that and I, I thought that was depicted so well in in the movie just for for 90 minutes as you mentioned if people have a chance to look at it 
just the lack of control. It was really astounding. But at the same time, it seems like that made the journey pretty exhilarating also in some ways. Well, you know, I mean, it could never happen what happened back then with the band. I mean, we had nobody on tour with us except our road manager and a couple of roadies. And I mean, we're, you know, 16, 17 years old out on the road for months at a time without any supervision whatsoever. And I think we held it together pretty well under those circumstances. And we had to depend on each other, um, even though we didn't know each other that well you know, when we went out on the road uh, for the first time. So when I look back on it now, my 60, almost 61 year old self really thinks that we were quite, quite remarkable to be able to, to, to deal with the homesickness and deal with, you know, not having our families. And um, I think we did pretty well. Uh, you know, I would agree. And I'm not saying that just to be agreeable. That, that is another takeaway that I have from your story is I think the average group, if there's such thing, of girls at that age would have imploded probably pretty darn rapidly. So if that that's something that I took away saying how even though even though this is out of control, the dichotomy is they they kept it together pretty well given the circumstances. And has that always been is that always been your mental makeup or are you always good of keeping control? Or do you have times where you've gone the opposite direction? Uh, you know, I mean, I've I've always been impulsive, and and that can be scary. Um, but I I mean, I'm a chainsaw artist. I uh, who does that? I mean, who like is who gravitates to something like such a dangerous thing to do? Um, but I mean, it, I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, you know. We had to be very strong, and I realize that now. We had to be so strong to be out there alone and and without anyone to support us. Um, you know, it was, uh, looking back on it, I mean, it, it truly does just blow my mind. It really does. And I think that all of us together, we just had such a magical gift, you know, I mean, when the five of us were up on that stage, I mean, there just was something about it that was uniquely wonderful. We, we, it just worked. So, you know, that's one thing I'll always look back on and be very proud of is, is um, that we found each other in that, you know. I, I just wish that we could have taken it completely to the next level, which we never were able to do. But with Guardians of the Galaxy and Cherry Bomb and all that coming into present day, um, and a lot of people really loving the runaways. It, it just makes it all so worthwhile. I would imagine that's a pretty incredible feeling, which is why I, I don't usually throw around words like iconic or legendary. But um, I mean, you, you guys, especially now, are, are so in the vernacular, the pop culture vernacular in particular, that it, it's got to be incredible to be a part of that. And it, it's really nice to to hear this perspective from you, Cherie. And, you know, again, I, I don't know you, we never met until today, but you can also, or I can feel how genuine it is. And, you know, I've, I, for some reason, I have a lot of friends. You know, we talked about Linda Blair uh, re, uh, briefly before we started this, uh, the recording. And I have a lot of friends who, you know, achieved the height of their fame a ways back. And I'm not saying this applies to Linda because it's the polar opposite, but many of them live the rest of their lives hanging on to that. And it, it's so nice to see refreshing to get your perspective on this and, and where you are on it. So, and you, you can tell it comes through, it comes through in how you talk and, and how you look. So I just wanted to share that it's, um, it's, it's nice to see that. In, in oh, development. thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, I just I think of myself as a chainsaw carver from the San Fernando Valley, you know, uh, all of the outreach for my album Boulevards of Splendor, I mean, was such a humbling experience for me to have, you know, Slash and Duff and, uh, you know, Brody Dahl and the Veronicas and Billy Corgan and all these people come to support me and Matt Sorm to produce this record. Mm -hmm. uh, I was so taken back by it because, again, you know, 
I really thought the runaways had all been but forgotten, but this record just showed me that 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 we had made a difference, you know, for these great artists to, and Julie, you know, coming and singing. Um, it, it, I mean, it just was a great experience. And, and, I, and I think the record really shows that. It shows the fun we had making that record. And that's important. So you, you mentioned people like, uh, like Matt Sorum and, and Duff McKagan, uh, Billy Corgan. I actually work with Billy right now. We're on a project together. Um, have you been in touch with Billy as of late? I have not, but I would certainly, I, I mean, he was so kind. And even after we had done the record, I reached out to him on a song that my son and I had written. And I just asked his opinion and he went out of his way to, to send me a video of things he would do differently. I mean, what a, if if you talk to Billy, give him my love and my thanks. I mean, he is such a down to earth, genius, brilliant he, he musical is. man, and he is, yes, yes, He's a good uh, guy. so kind. Yeah, and so good guy, so smart, and uh, I will definitely pass it on. We we were working on a pro wrestling project together, of all things, if you can believe that. Is that's that what, right? <laughs> that's what wow. We're yeah, who who would have guessed, right? But that's that said. Speaking of going into a different type of world or profession. So a few minutes ago, you asked uh, what sounded like a rhetorical question. I'm a chainsaw artist, who does that? That's a good question. I mean, who does that, <laughs> right? What, well, what, I know what, a few, I know a few, of course, because I competed, I competed in 2005 on a few competitions. I, there's quite a few of us out there, but not many. So um, what, is, what is a chainsaw artist, uh, do tell? Well, what I do, I take a chainsaw and a piece of wood and I carve a mermaid or, a, you know, bears or seals, dolphins. I mean, my, my, my favorite thing is sea life, but I've been a chainsaw artist for almost 20 years. So you could just couldn't go from rock star to librarian, could you? <laughs> no, I could not. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're pretty, I guess... Um... Do you consider yourself a pretty uh, extreme personality type or you just, is that just your makeup? No, I don't, I don't know. I, to be honest, I mean, I've spent the last 10 years of my life, no relationship. I mean, besides my son, my family, my friends, I mean, no romantic uh, endeavors of any kind. I, I just thought it was very important because I thought I couldn't live without someone in my life that, I just like you quitting everything, all the sugar and all the others. For me, I had to quit romance. You know, I mean, is that extreme? Probably. But it, it was a blessing for me, you know, to know that I didn't need to have that someone else to make me feel good about myself, if you understand what I mean. I do, because once again, I say we're very much on the same page. It's liberating. Uh, as we as we discussed briefly before we started recording, like yourself, I live with my dogs. And yeah. I, I don't want to say they're my whole life. They're a huge part of it, certainly. But yeah, I haven't. Same thing. I, I was girl crazy my entire life. Woman crazy, whatever we want to call it. And about 10 years ago, it's not that I lost interest. It just didn't matter so much anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's liberating, is it not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I mean, the, the sad thing is, is more than likely, I mean, some people will think it's sad. Uh, I don't actually see myself having a, a relationship with, uh, you know, a man again. I mean, I just, because my life, I'm so in love with not having to ask someone if it's okay to do this or, you know, can I do that? Or should I make this or, you know what I mean? And I mean, because I, I was so boy crazy myself that I lost myself in my relationships. They always came first. And in the, and in the end, I resented them so much that I feel, feel like, um, and plus they always wanted to change me, you know? Uh, yeah. Or they were jealous or, you know, and I just don't need it. I just don't need it in my life. You know, I mean, I'm going to be 61. I mean, what have I got? 20, 30 years if I'm lucky. My mother's going to be 97. Uh, oh, wow. But she, she's, she has Alzheimer's and she hasn't spoken my name in seven years. And it's tragic, a terrible uh, disease. 
But the thing is, is I might have longevity in my life, um, thanks to my mother. But I just can't see giving up, like you said, the liberating feeling of, of not having to worry about someone else's feelings all the time. Is this? Oh, and, well, this, Rick, I'm so, 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 Rick, I'm so sorry, but there's another interview on the line actually waiting for oh, me gosh. right now. And I was enjoying this so much. No, that's all right. I appreciate it. You, you gave us a lot of time. It was really nice to meet you. My uh, pleasure, Rick. Thank Curry, you so Luke. much.